Hi, welcome to part two of the biological psychology unit uh, where we talk about neural communications uh, going a little bit farther. Last unit we talked about the, um, the last part we talked about the parts of the neuron and today we're going to talk about or this part we're going to talk about what kind of what goes on, how that information gets sent. What all gets started with is action potential. To review again real quick, these are the dendrites right here, right? These little things, uh, branch looking things. This was the cell body. Um, this long part right here was the axon. This is where the message gets sent. The axon is covered with these myelin sheets, which are made by uh, Schwann. I don't think I mentioned this or wrote it down last part, but Schwann cells. Myelin sheets really speeds up that information. And then it gets sent over here to the terminal branches, right? The terminal, like a train terminal, is at the end. And then that information then gets shot off to another neuron, right? This is pick one picture of a neuron, and there's billions and billions of these things in your body. So we're looking at a very, very small level here. But if we understand the small, we can expand it to get a little bit bigger. But anyhow, what happens is when a cell or a neuron gets stimulated, it creates what's called an action potential. So what's going on here is inside the cell is a bunch of is it has a negative charge. All right, so you got to go back to a little bit of chemistry or uh, physics to remember what charge is, right? So this has got a negative charge in here. Outside is a bunch of positive charges. Okay, so this is generally how your body works. Now when it gets stimulated some of these positives, right, before, before it's stimulated, this is pretty much impermeable. S stuff can't get in or out. It's like a Fort Knox in there. Nothing's going in or out. When it gets stimulated, when this neuron gets stimulated, this opens up a little bit. And some of the doors start to open. Or, you know, the, the um, cover off the sewer gets opened up a little bit. And stuff can kind of fit in. And so some of these positives get in here, okay? Well, when we have this change in uh, composition, we create this action potential, which creates this electrical charge, right? Because you remember from uh, science that um, negative and positive are attracted and uh, a whole bunch of one type of charge doesn't want to be close together. So when we get attraction like this, we create an electrical charge. And this electrical charge then is then sent down the axon, okay? It's not sent down that, we, that electrical charge or that sending of the signal down the axon is not sent down until we reach something called a threshold. A threshold is that, is this point right here where, you know, you start down here and it's not gonna go, it's not gonna go, it's not gonna go. It's not like if you get right here, a little bit of electrical charge will go down, nothing will go down. It's, if you get, if you, it's not until you reach right here, right when you reach there, then the entire electrical charge goes down. The entire electrical charge goes down. That's called the all or nothing principle. So you're either going to get the entire electrical charge going down or nothing, and that's only when it reaches this threshold. If you don't reach the threshold, nothing goes down. So this could be stimulated a little bit, but unless it's stimulated enough, to reach the threshold, nothing's going to happen. Again, that's the all or nothing principle. It's kind of like uh, the example that we'll use in class of the toilet. You can push the handle of the toilet a little bit down, a little bit down, a little bit down, but it's not until you push it all the way down that it'll go. And then once you push it, it's all or nothing. There's no like, oh, I didn't mean to flush it right now. And you push it back up, it'll stop. It's gone. So again, all or nothing principle. Um, the next term is what's called a synapse. Now, in between these, um, let's see if I can move this. Not just one of them, come on. There we go. So we've got two of these now. This is how the neurons look. And this little area right here, this little gap between the terminal branches, remember this is this area right here. So this is the terminal branches on this side, and this is the dendrites on this side, 
this little area right here, this is called the synaptic gap, or sometimes it's called the synaptic cleft. Mostly, I usually see it referred to as synaptic gap. So yeah, that's that area right here. So the neurons have to, or I'm sorry, the electrical charge jumps across that little area right there. It's going to jump, whoop, right? Um, and so that's the synaptic gap, or that's called a, a synapse. Um, I'm sorry. So what gets sent across that synapse? Oftentimes it's a, uh, let's get rid of that. Oftentimes it's a neurotransmitter. Now a neurotransmitter are um, really important for our behavior. They tell us when to feel sad, when to feel happy, depending on where they're in our body, they will mean different things. Neurotransmitters, and I go over this in another part, um, things like serotonin, dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine, these, uh, and I go over all of those in a later part, talking about exactly what they do, but they, they are super important to how we feel and what we think. Um, so important, and they're, they're relatively not known too much about. Like We're at the very tip of the iceberg in psychology, understanding what neurotransmitters do, how they work, etc. So there's a lot of products. So just reading this today, you know, if you watch this video in 10 years from now, there's probably a lot more known about neurotransmitters than there is today. Um, so these neurotransmitters, you know, they send these information when they get sent across. Now, after it's sent, some of those neurotransmitters get sucked back up into the neuron or into the cell. All right. So say you've got some, you got some neurotransmitters here, neurotransmitters. Some of them get sucked. That's called reuptake. Reuptake. It gets reuptaked in, in there. Um, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, depending on what um, neurotransmitter we're talking about. But um, it gets, there's reuptake that occurs. Um, so the reuptake is when the neurotransmitters are being reuptaken into the neuron. All right, that's all we've got for today. So we start off with action potential. That's when the neuron's stimulated. It creates an imbalance or an electrical charge and sends the message or the neural impulse down the axon, right? It doesn't do that unless it reaches a threshold. The threshold was that point at which it's all or nothing. Um, after it's sent down there, it shoots over across the synaptic gap or the synapse. And what's sent across? Neurotransmitters, which tell us our body how to feel. And those neurotransmitters are then experience reuptake back into the drum. That's all we've got for today, so thank you for re watching. <laughs>